Good morning guys. Today uh, we're going to look at solving quadratic equations using a new technique called the quadratic formula. Um, in the last lecture I asked you to solve this equation by the technique completing the square. So let's go through and see what this looks like when we solve it with completing the square. Uh, first thing we're supposed to do is isolate our constant. So let's move our c to the other side. So we get ax squared plus bx um, equals negative c. Next move is to divide by the lead coefficient. So we're going to divide everything by a. So we get x squared plus b over a x um, equals negative c over a. Now we get to the actual completing the square step. And that's where we add b over 2 squared. Well, b is our coefficient on x after we have divided by our lead coefficient. So in this problem, it's going to be b over a over 2. This is my linear coefficient over 2 squared plus b over a over 2 squared. From there, we go through, we clean it up. x squared plus b over ax plus b squared over 4a squared, right? Because that's going to be 2a. Uh, divide by 2 means times a half, so b over a times 1 over 2 is b over 2a. Squared is b squared uh, over 4a squared. On the right hand side, negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. And we'll go through and factor. So I get x squared is x and x. b squared over 4a squared is b over 2a. And we're just taking this, we're just saying what was multiplied by itself. So b squared was b and b, 4 was 2 and 2, a was a and a. So b over 2a and b over 2a. Uh, let's clean up this right hand side a little bit more. Uh, we'll write the b squared over 4a squared. We'll write that first. This, if I want to put these together, I need to make a common denominator. So left hand side is x plus b over 2a quantity squared. Right hand side, I need to make a common denominator. So they already have an a as a common factor of the denominator. So this right hand denominator just needs a 4a. So if I do 4a times a, that makes 4a squared. If you do it to the denominator, do it to the numerator. So what we end up with is 4a squared is our common denominator, and we get b squared minus c times 4 times a, or we'll call it 4ac. Now that we've completed the square and factor, we take the square root of both sides. So x plus b over 2a equals, don't forget your plus or minus, square root of b squared minus 4ac all over square root of 4a squared. We can simplify that denominator because they're all perfect squares. So we get plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over square root of 4 is 2, square root of a is a. Uh, numerator we can't do anything with because it's got that minus sign in there. So you can't really, remember you can't touch individual terms within a square root. Um, like you can individual factors. And we finish off by moving the b over 2a. And luckily again, not luckily, it's just the it's way it always happens, but we have common denominators here. So we can say a uh, common denominator of 2a, and we'll do negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, which should look very familiar to you uh, from your previous algebra courses. Uh, that is the quadratic formula. And we'll pretend that that was a box. There we go. Got a little sideways there. So that is the quadratic formula. 
Um, and just like with completing the square, how it can solve any type of quadratic, the quadratic formula can also solve any type of quadratic. And the reason is because it's just completing the square. Instead of going through all the steps of completing the square, it just jumps you straight to the answer by plugging in A, B, and C. That's the quadratic coefficient, the linear coefficient, and the constant. Once you have it equal to zero, you plug those into these specific locations and perform those specific operations, and it will take you straight to the answer every single time. So it's completing the square with all of the work done. You just have to do the simplifying at the end. Uh, if you'll give me a couple minutes, I'll get some examples up and I'll let you uh, practice using uh, the quadratic formula. So here we have a few examples for you uh, to solve by using the quadratic formula. Uh, I'll take you through the first one and I'll let you try these next two on your own. First thing I always do is um, set it equal to zero. Get all my terms to the same side. So let's move my 10 over. So that gives me x squared plus 10x plus 10 equals 0. And then I always like to write down the quadratic formula um, just so I have it right in front of me. x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I will write that quadratic formula every single time. <clears throat> just helps me remember it. So it'll help you with your memorization on it. Because um, you'll be surprised how many people will leave off that negative on the front or forget the plus or minus or some other little uh, nuance, maybe the square on that b squared. So just write it every single time you get ready to, to um, work one of these. From that point, or from this point, it's a matter of just plugging in your a, your b, and your c, and reducing a radical, simplifying a fraction. So let's take it, x equals negative b, so negative 10, plus or minus square root of b squared, 10 squared minus 4, a is 1, c is 10, all over 2 times a, which is 1. There's an order of operations now we've got to take care of inside this square root first. So negative 10 plus or minus 10 squared is 100, 4 times 1 times 10 is 40, all over 2 times 1 is 2, let's pull it up here real quick, negative 10 plus or minus square root of 60 over 2, 60 is going to be 4 times 15 if we're looking for a perfect square factor, square root of 4 is 2. So negative 10 plus or minus 2 square root of 15 all over 2. And remember when you're reducing fractions, if it's not in a fraction that has multiple terms in the numerator, if you can't reduce all terms of the numerator, you can't reduce any terms of the numerator. It's an all or none thing. Okay, because it's negative 10 over 2 plus or minus the 2 square root of 15 over 2. So if we're going to reduce, it's got to be all three places. The denominator has to reduce by it and both terms of the numerator, both of the things that were plus or minus in it. The square root will never come into play from a fraction reducing standpoint because we're not reducing by a square root. We're reducing by a rational number, so only the rational numbers are going to be affected by that. Uh, so we can see that all three will divide by two. So you need to write divide by two, divide by two, divide by two. That's fine. Negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Square root of 15 is not impacted. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we just say it's negative 5 plus or minus square root of 15, which if you remember from our completing the square lecture, is the exact same answer we got for that exact same equation when we did completing the square. All right. Um, Pause the video for a few minutes, try these next two out. You already know what the answers should be from looking back at the completing the square lecture. Uh, but go through, try them out, and I will wait right here. All right, hopefully you were able to go through and accurately um, 
simplify your large fraction radical expression. Uh, let's go through and let's just check your work. Uh, first thing, let's get everything to the same side. So I'll move my 3x over. I'll move my 2 over. Uh, so we get 2x squared minus 3x. 6 minus 2 is 4. Uh, there's A, B, C. If it helps you label them right now, go ahead and label them. Uh, write your quadratic formula out. X equals negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Then just plug in. So X equals negative B, so negative negative 3, plus or minus square root of negative 3 squared. Remember your parentheses right there because we're not squaring just the 3, we're squaring the negative and the 3. Uh, minus 4 times A, which is 2, C, which is 4, all over 2 times A, which is 2. That's just to clean it up. Negative negative 3 is positive 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. 4, 2, and 4 is 16 and 2, which is 32. So minus 32 over 4. So 3 plus or minus square root of negative 23. 9 minus 32 is negative 23. Over 4, simplify the square root if possible. Uh, 23 has no perfect square factors, uh, but the negative we know we can deal with, so that becomes 3 plus or minus i square root of 23 over 4. Uh, if you want to do it square root of 23 with i afterwards, that is okay. Uh, typically, I will write it in front of the square root just because I don't want any confusion about exactly what is under the square root. But you could very easily see it written 3 fourths plus square root of 23 fourths i, you know, in complex form. Um, but I'm okay with it if you will leave it in that because it's consistent with all the other um, quadratic formula solutions that we come up with. So last lecture we had that as the solution, so you just kind of double check that. Uh, and last one, we know what it's going to be, but let's go through and do it anyways. Let's move our... Let's just move the x over. Now, I don't have to have a positive lead coefficient to do this. I, a can be a negative number. There's nothing wrong with that. So negative 2x squared minus x plus 6 equals 0. We've got our quadratic formula right here. x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Uh, then we just plug in. There's a. There's b. That's a negative 1. There's C, so X equals negative B, negative negative 1, plus or minus the square root of B squared, negative 1 squared, minus 4, times negative 2, times 6, 4 times A was negative 2, C was 6, all over 2 times A, 2 times negative 2. Clean it up, 1 and negative negative makes positive 1, plus or minus, one, negative 1 squared is 1, 4, 2, and 6 is 24, and 2 is 48, all over negative 4. So we get 1, yeah, plus or minus square root of 49 over negative 4. We know square root of 49 will actually reduce or simplify to um, a rational number. So 1 plus or minus. Square root's gone. Answered the question, so the radical's gone. 7 over negative 4, and we just do the math. Anytime I get to this point and the square root is gone, the i is gone, we can get two rational solutions. So 1 plus 7 over negative 4. So 8 over negative 4 equals negative 2. Okay? And 1 minus 7 over negative 4, which is going to be negative 6 over negative 4. Four, and that's three halves. And I guess a little tiny on you right there. Um, hopefully you can hear me. You can maybe zoom in on that. I don't know. Uh, but negative two and three halves are the two solutions. Remember, quadratics should always have two solutions. So the plus or minus gives us the two solutions there. And this one, we were actually able to get two unique, um, two unique rational solutions on that one. So again, this one would have factored out. Uh, there is a special little property I want to talk to you about that has to do with 
identifying when it could factor, whether it has imaginary solutions and so on. Um, and if you give me a second, I'll get this cleaned off and I'll put those little observations up there for you. You know what guys, I've changed my mind. I'm not going to put the observations up here for you. Um, we'll talk about it in class. What I want you guys to do is look at this quadratic formula and try to figure out just by looking at the formula what could tell me between the formula and the actual original expression. Um, how could I know how many real solutions or how many rational or how many imaginary solutions we're going to get? There is something in this formula that will tell me all of that information. Number of rational solutions, number of real solutions. Um, I want, we're going to talk about it in class. So come into class with some ideas about what in that quadratic formula could tell us those few things. And I will see you in class tomorrow, guys.